Hello, and thank you for tuning in to our Virtual Student Scholar Days presentation. My name is Maddie Stouter, and I am a double major in secondary English education, English liberal arts, with a minor in Spanish. I'm a junior at Adams State University, and today I will be presenting on the educational and linguistic side of empowering Spanish-speaking individuals within the U.S. Thank you for joining us. My name is Mariah McDermott. I am a senior here at Adams State. I'm also a double major in political science and history, and I have minors in Spanish and business as well. I will be discussing the political and economic consequences of killing language, specifically Spanish, in our democracy. In our presentation, we will be going over several things that help empower Spanish-speaking individuals within the United States. From the educational and linguistic side, we will be addressing the struggles of language learning, which include elements like speech production and speech recognition, as well as empowering teaching methods, which include the use of phonetics, phonemes, morphosyntactic understanding, and verbal assessment within the classroom. By utilizing these by utilizing these basic linguistic tools in the educational system, students will have a greater understanding of the English language, which will help them in their post-secondary lives. To go along with the educational tools and strategies for English learners, we will also discuss and highlight the political and economic consequences of eliminating language opportunities, America's disappointing democracy, who is not representing and who is not being represented, and how the representation translates into opportunity for Hispanic students. Through these areas of discussion, we hope to demonstrate the failures of the U.S. democratic system as well as the educational system to meet the needs of diverse language learners and speakers in the American system. Before we dive into our research on empowering Spanish-speaking individuals within the United States educational and political systems, we must first understand the logistics of diverse populations. The rise of diverse populations within the United States has brought forth lots of change to the country. As more and more diverse groups are making their homes here, the definition of what it means to be an American is physically and culturally changing. In the United States today, Spanish is one of the most common languages spoken. A study by the National Center for Educational Statistics showed that in 2016, Spanish was the native language of over 3.7 million students. In turn, that number makes up for about 7.6% of the students in public schools. These numbers have only increased with time and will continue to do so. In fact, in the year 2050, it is predicted that over 39% of children under the age of five will come from Spanish-speaking homes. As the number of diverse students increase, so does the need for a different approach in educating a wide variety of students. There are many obstacles that come with learning a new language. For example, speech production or turning thoughts into speech is a very complex process that is crucial for effective communication. Located in the Broca area of the brain, speech production helps individuals select, organize, and articulate words. For English language learners, this means that in order to master their new language, they must suppress their instinctive habits from their native language so that they may strengthen their comprehension of English. However, students learning English have more struggles than just producing language. Another obstacle students encounter is speech recognition, or the process within humans to acknowledge language and be able to adequately respond to it. For native speakers of any given language, this task comes almost effortlessly. This means that English language learners must work to understand natural speech as well as their competing speech. In order to help English language learners succeed, educators must consider these factors and use linguistic methods as a foundation for mastering the English language. Because of the struggles that come with learning a new language, it is important for educators to utilize linguistic tools to help English language learners succeed. Research encourages educators to shift their focus to phonetics, or the emphasis on speech sounds. For example, phonetics tell us that the long U sound can be heard in the words blue and food, just like the short A sound can be heard in the words black and cat. The emphasis on phonetics can be especially useful for Spanish speakers, as English and Spanish share many cognates. Because of their shared roots, language transfer is more likely to occur between Spanish and English. As a result, English language learners will be able to make connections between their new language and their native language, ultimately making their phonetic understanding stronger in both languages. 
As stated earlier, this process is called forward language transfer, meaning that elements from the native language are being learned and applied to the new language. While phonetics and speech sounds do help students make connections between their native language and their learned language, there are many other linguistic elements that must also be learned for effective communication. Because of this, it is imperative that teachers incorporate phonemes into their daily practice with their students. A phoneme is a unit of sound that distinguishes one word from another. For example, in the words pad and pat, there is only one letter that separates these two words. However, they both mean different things. This is incredibly important because it helps students understand the differences in word definitions and context. By focusing on phonemes, students will be able to have a greater understanding of how to spot the differences in English words and will also be able to understand how to use them in context. This is useful for reading, writing, and communication, skills that will be used in school as well as in post-secondary life. When it comes to learning language, morphology and syntax are two universal components across all languages. Morphology, or word formation and structure, is important because it provides phonological form, meaning, and definition. Syntax, on the other hand, is the construction of sentences. It allows speakers to create linguistic expressions through form and meaning. While many English language learners have morphosyntactic understandings in their native language, they fail to have the same knowledge in their new language. This, in turn, leads to comprehension difficulties in reading, writing, and everyday communication. Comprehension is essential for mastering a new language. In order for students to have a solid understanding of language, research encourages educators to tap into the student's native language in addition to the new language. The hope with this practice is that students will be able to more efficiently find morphological meaning and syntactic expression in both languages. All of these linguistic tools can be paired with the educational practice known as verbal assessment, where language is practiced aloud in the classroom. Research shows that students are more likely to fully learn a language when they are immersed into a society where it is spoken. As a result, exposure to the new language in a school setting becomes even more valuable. This is known as the linguistic immersion theory, or the idea that students will learn language based on what kind of environment they are surrounded by. With this theory, students are more likely to repeat or imitate words and sentences that they encounter in school. For educators, this perfectly sets the stage for open-ended conversations, allowing educators to ask questions and assess where each student is in their learning process. In turn, educators can help make corrections when needed and also verbally give praise when it is earned. This tactic also allows students to practice forming words and sentences aloud and can assist them in finding meaning within their new language. Verbal communication and assessment has the potential to create greater morphosyntactic understanding for students in both their native and new language. It encourages students to phonetically break down words and will assist them in their phonemic awareness. By practicing language aloud, educators are promoting linguistic tools that will ultimately ensure a greater language capacity within students. These linguistic and educational tools are crucial for English language learner success within the classroom. However, empowering Spanish speakers goes beyond the secondary world. A strong democracy is possible when citizens are well represented and able to be politically active in their own political interest. It is no secret that the U.S. political system undermines this for specific populations, especially Hispanic people. This happens when voting is not accessible or viewed as valuable by certain populations and communities. A study done by author Daniel Hopkins from George Washington University suggested that language assistance and voter turnout have a close correlation. When language assistance is available, voter turnout in Hispanic and Spanish-speaking populations is higher. Another variable that significantly impacts voter turnout is the differences depending on the makeup of neighborhoods and communities where voters are voting. Dense Spanish-speaking populations are more likely to turn out on election day and feel welcome in their neighborhoods than Spanish speakers who are not facing similar circumstances as their neighbors and fellow voters. Another important variable to consider is the importance of membership in political organizations and the effect that this can have on voter turnout and the importance and value that is placed on issues and candidates running for office. 
election outcomes are severely altered and changed based on voter turnout and the types of voters that decide to participate in elections. And the symbolic effects can carry into future elections and legislation that significantly impacts these populations. There are over 8 million U.S. citizens that are not proficient in English, and this demonstrates that our educational system is failing, but it also demonstrates that there's a significant number of the population that relies on the Spanish language to navigate the political system, even though it's not available to them. Even though 18% of the U.S. population is made up of Hispanic and Latino voters, only about 10% of Congress is made up of Hispanic or Latino congressmen. Only four U.S. Senators identify as Latino, and it's even more disappointing in the House of Representatives that are meant to represent the people. In the last U.S. Census, there were significant changes to the significance of the Latino population was hugely important for California and Arizona in particular, where their House of Representatives seats were retained and protected after the 2010 Census. Um, in Arizona, about 31% of the population is made up of Latinos, and in California, it's even higher at about 40%. In Arizona, we have two representatives that identify as Latino out of seven, and in California, it's only 15 out of 43. What's even more significant is the population of young voters and the future of these states. In California, 51% of the people in 2010 under the age of 18 were Hispanic. And now these people have become of age to vote and participate in elections even more. The consequences of this inadequate representation is deep in the educational system as well as access to opportunities in the United States. With another census about to happen, it's important that we remember how important these populations of people are, even though they're not being adequately represented or thought about in political decisions. Spanish today is used as a politicized symbol, and this is seen through the various partisan responses by Democrats and Republicans. The Democratic Party tends to have more concern for Latinos than the Republican Party does, and Latinos definitely feel this way as they vote more Democrat than they do Republican by a great amount. In fact, 61% of Latino voters say that Democrats have more concern for Hispanics compared to just 10% who said the same of Republicans. The difference is made up of those who believed that there was no difference between the parties. Currently, about two-thirds of Hispanic voters say they identify as Democrats, and 24% say they identify as Republican or lean towards the GOP. This is especially true for women and young people. In 2016, almost 30 million Hispanics were eligible to vote in the United States elections, and while this was up 4 million from 2012, less people were willing to vote in the election. While Spanish is used as a politicized symbol, it's also important to recognize the important benefits that are available to the United States because of bilingual citizens in the economy. Spanish is the second largest language in the United States. However, in the political system and economic system, it is undervalued in many aspects. Not many know that Spanish is actually the first European language that was spoken in what is now the United States. Even though this language is beginning to dominate more of the economy and political system, the demand for the language skills in the workforce, and specifically Spanish, is still very high. Employers complain about these needs not being met for their companies and businesses, and this is likely due to the gap in educational opportunity and success by Latino students. While more students are accessing college and higher education, there's still a gap in which kinds of students are earning degrees. A lot of this can also vary from state to state and how easy it is to access and succeed in educational systems. Florida and New York have done specifically a much better job at shrinking the gap between white and non-white students and succeeding to earn a degree. 
in the upcoming years, the United States workforce will be depending on young workers and employees to fill the gaps that boomers will leave after they retire. The United States economy can greatly benefit from filling these gaps with young Hispanic workers that are qualified and able to fill these gaps, but if the problems persist, then this is highly unlikely. In 2018, the United States House of Representatives became the most diverse body that the House has ever seen. This has many implications, especially for minorities and women that are being represented by these individuals who broke barriers to be able to enter office. Diversity in leadership and decision-making positions increases In 2018, the United States House of Representatives became the most diverse body that the House has ever seen. This has many implications, especially for minorities and women that are being represented by these individuals who broke barriers to be able to enter office. Diversity in leadership and decision-making positions increases levels of importance on various issues that may not have otherwise been important at that level. And along with this, there are increased uh, amounts of alternatives and perspectives on issues and legislation. We know that Democrats are the more diverse party, but it's still not enough. But they're much further ahead than the Republicans are on this issue. And because of this, there's less groupthink and more individuality with making decisions. Bottom line, decisions are of a higher quality in these institutions because of the diversity that is happening. And there are significant ethical implications that tend to be more positive because of this change. This is a trend that hopefully continues because when representatives match the constituencies that they're representing, you hope that they're using their personal experience to make a positive change in their communities. We hope that this presentation promotes useful ways for encouraging inclusion in the United States and in the political and educational systems within our country as accessibility issues, especially in the Latino community, are significantly altering the communities and future of them.